Now we can see more about the peripatus. So peripatus it is a very small terrestrial worm or a caterpillar like worm and it is a predaceous carnivore. Usually they live in certain crevices or underneath the logs, leaf litter etc. because they prefer a warm and damp habitat. These animals are nocturnal that means they will be active during the night. Another uh, interesting feature is the discontinuous distribution of this animal. You, they are uh, usually seen in the tropical rainforest of Congo, Western Himalayas, Central America, Northern part of South America like that. So this uh, discontinuous distribution, it shows that in the remote past when they evolved, when there was a land connection between various continents, these animals, they enjoyed a continuous and successful distribution. Later, maybe due to the destruction of their habitat, their distribution become restricted to certain pockets resulting in the discontinuous distribution in the recent period. Now they are also living fossils because they have been evolved in the remote past, it became rain period, they have flourished uh, and uh, some of the fossils have been obtained along with the Cambrian fossils. So they flourished during that period and still they are existing without undergoing any change. So such animals they are considered as a living fossils. Another peculiarity is that since these organisms exhibit anelidin and arthropodin features, they are considered as the organisms that interlink anelida and arthropoda and so they are considered as a connecting link also. Now, seeing about the external features, so as already mentioned, they are small looking like caterpillars. Body is soft, subcylindrical, uh, usually about 5 to 10 cm long. Now, body it is covered by thin, lightly cutinized, soft, flexible and velvety skin. And another peculiarity is that the skin uh, has uh, numerous uh, transverse rings of uh, papillae and these papillae they are what like and uh, scale covered papillae. So it is very evident from this picture. Transverse rings of what like and scale covered papillae. Papillae it is armed with certain chitinous bristles or spines. Body it is truly segmented, but uh, true uh, signs of external segmentation is absent. Paired appendages can be seen. Uh, paired ostia that means the opening of the heart. Paired nephridia and paired nerve ganglia all can be seen. Then another feature is the absence of cephalization. Uh, distinct uh, true head is absent here also. So the first three segments of the body has, it has been fused to form um, an unspecialized head. So this, uh, while analyzing this, we can uh, see that they have an intermediate uh, character between the anelidins and arthropodins because anelidins uh, they are having unspecialized head uh, which is uh, made up of uh, three segments and uh, these arthropodins uh, they are having um, a, a head uh, which is uh, six segmented and all the other segments, uh, apart from this first three, it, it forms uh, the um, part of the uh, trunk of the body. Uh, the head, it has uh, three pairs of appendages, a pair of uh, simple dorsal eyes and ventral mouth. Mouth that is surrounded by certain ridged and spiny lips, uh, furnished with tooth and um, muscular tongue. First segment, it is pre-oral, it is having the sensory antennae. Antennae, it is long, mobile, annulated with the spine-tipped papillae. When analyzing the second segments, claw-like toothed mandibles on the inner edges of the mouth can be seen. 
is used for grasping and cutting the fruit. Third segment, it consists of a short conical uh, and a tuberculated oral papillae, a uh, slime duct from which uh, the slime glands open uh, on, on the surface of this papillae. It is seen here. Uh, so, this slimy secretion, it is, uh, when it is secreted, the prey or like uh, small predators, they will be entangled to this slime. So, it is a protective mechanism and also it helps in the feeding. The trunk has already said apart from the uh, first three segments, other segments all uh, form the part of the trunk and the number of segments may be ranging from 13 to 43. So, uh, there will be 13 to 43 pair of short, uh, stubby, unjointed and unirous, fleshy, hollow appendages on the trunk portion. And these appendages are called as the walking legs or lobopores and they are having terminal claws. The number of legs it will uh, vary according to the sex, it is varying according to the species. Usually males have fewer number of legs. Legs bear the nephridiopore on the ventral surface of its base and again a coxal gland can be seen. So this coxal gland is said to gather water from the ground. In males, an opening of pleural gland is also seen near the left. The last segment, since it bears the anus, is called as the anal segment, and in front of the anus, the nitrile opening can be seen in between the penultimate pair of the legs. Now, next we can see about the affinities. Uh, in this picture, the what's uh, papillae. What's like papillae, it is uh, much more clearer and annular. Um, antennae can also be seen. It is unjointed, so annular wings can be seen. Claws can be seen on the legs. Uh, now, next we can see about the affinities of peripatus. So, as already mentioned, it uh, shows annelidin features as well as the arthropodent features. Annelidin features, a um, vermiform body, well defined head is absent. Unjointed stumpy legs, parapodia like legs, which is a mere extension of body wall, thermomuscular body wall within uh, flexible cuticular covering, a straight, uh, simple elementary canal, short foregut and hindgut, segmentally paired nephridia, which are just to the modified pseudomodact, then silomic gonads and ciliated gonoduct, eyes, the structure of eyes, this is also having similarity with the uh, Annelidans. Now, uh, looking into the arthropodan features, the antennae and uh, tooth uh, like mandibles can be seen. Cuticle it is formed of alpha chitin and certain proteins. Molting can be seen. Uh, clawed legs, absence of intersegmental septum. Hemocell, it is compartmentalized. Absence of perivisceral coelom, highly reduced coelom. Salivary glands, presence of salivary glands, then tracheal system of respiration, open blood vascular system with the dorsal heart with paired valvular opening ostia and the superficial cleavage, they are all the arthropodan features. And they are having the com certain feature, common features of arthropodans and anagrifans, <coughs> that is the metamerism, segmentation of the body, segmentally paired appendages. Uh, they are all the uh, features common to both annelidans and arthropodans. And apart from that, these organisms also exhibit certain unique features of their own, that is, absence of external segmentation, pre segmented heart, velvety integument with a body prominence, unjointed antennae, but short jaw jointed, hollow clawed legs, irregularly scattered spiracles, uh, they are not segmentally paired. Adder like nervous system and widely separated nerve cords. So, these are the unique features exhibited by this organism, which uh, is a feature of their own. Now, considering the evolutionary significance, uh, they resemble the pre Cambrian fossil. They are showing a discontinuous distribution. They are uh, having an intermediate stage in their evolution. That means they are connecting the annelidans and the arthropodans. That is why they are considered as the um, connecting links. So, since they are resembling the Precambrian fossil forms, they are considered as the living fossils.
now uh, due to their resemblance with the arthropodans earlier they were included as a class under the uh, phylum arthropoda but now uh, when uh, more features are studied more unique characters have been identified they are now considered as a independent phylum as a phylum monaico four 